there we are. Let me say good evening to the people of God at Kingsley Terrace in Indianapolis. Yes, we certainly are blessed to be here. And uh, again, on this uh, second night, third night uh, of this series of gospel meetings, uh, I can't say enough about the angel of this house. <clears throat> And if you ever want to know what I'm talking about when I say the angel of the house, read the book of Revelation. Uh, I said that uh, and uh, did that at home and talked about that. And, uh, you know, some people frowned out. I know you ain't no angel. <laughs> the word angel means messenger. That's right. That's right. Uh, That's right. Uh, now, just because you don't get the message, then. <laughs> <laughs> your mailbox. I just put it in. That rest is up to you. You got to open the mailbox. Some folk come to church parking in front of the mailbox. You park oh, in front of the mailbox. You make your mail. Yeah. It's amazing how many things we park in front of our mailbox. And we miss the message. Yeah, that's what that means, the angel of this house. Brother and Sister Hubbard are just wonderful people. And uh, Carol and I have really been enjoying our time with your preacher and his wife, and, uh, and and in that regard, we and the fellowship we have with you all, uh, we would hate to see this thing end, but Amen. we have three girls at the house oh, <laughs> with an uncle that lets them run the mill, <laughs> and so we have to get back and restore some order <laughs> after tomorrow night. My friend Joe is just like I remember him. I was not surprised when he busted me out. He said he didn't want to tag team with me. Forget you, dude. That's all right, That's all right though. That's all right. Some friends you have for life. Right? That's the same thing. So uh, we love Joe uh, as well. I understand that this is a real rainy season for this church. What I mean by rainy season, I mean there's a lot of loss yeah. and a lot of grief going on. As a matter of fact, we were uh, eating last night and got, and Brother Hubbard got the call of uh, 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 one of the brethren, Brother Mills, yes. the Lord called home. In our culture, we, we've been trained, we've been trained from small children. When somebody gives you something, uh, manners demand that you say what? Thank you. Thank you. Right? If they give you a compliment, you say thank you. If they give you uh, a haircut, <laughs> Sister Kenya, you say thank you. <laughs> if they give you, uh, if they give you some kind words, you say thank you. We're, what we're not taught in our culture is to say thank you when someone takes something away. That, that's not a part of our culture. Right? And that's why when we're born again, we're introduced to a new culture that says you thank God for what he gives you, but you also thank him for taking it away. Because the fact that he can take something away means he gave it to you in the first place. And children of God know to not just say thank you when God gives you, but we have a spirit of gratitude even when the Lord takes away. Because God does nothing outside of the realm of his love for us. You understand what I'm saying? He does nothing outside of the realm of his love for us. Come with me now. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Come help me sing. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Lord.
person doesn't owe you something, when they give you something, they're not paying a debt. No, they're giving a gift. Thank you, Jesus. Come with me to 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter. We're going to begin reading with verse number one and terminate at verse number eight, but let me, uh, let me admonish you tonight. Uh, we're going to move as expeditiously as possible, but you really need to understand everything in context as we have been talking about this congregation. No doubt is not a stranger to contextual preaching. You're, the man of God at this house is a contextual preacher. Uh, so you should know and be aware that we can't just rip a, a verse out of its context and expect everybody to have a thorough understanding of what the Bible is saying. And so we'll read from verse 1 through verse 8, uh, talk about what we're going to talk about, and then talk about what we said we would talk about. All right. Let's talk about it. Is that all right? The Bible says, Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. How he laid wait for him in the way which he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Tilium, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah and came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And said, Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For he showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. Now, underline Kenites. Okay, someone asked me the other night, you know, I want to study more and this and one of the things we, we, we should do as students of the Bible when we study something, now we can't fit it all into a sermon, but when you study the ancient text, don't read over something as if you know what it means. You, you understand? That, that, that's like halfway eating a crab leg. My, my, daughters, my daughters will eat chicken wings and when they're done, I say pass them to me. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I'm not about to let you throw this away with all this meat and gristle still left. So, so underline Kenites. Now, they're not the subject of our discussion, but everything is in the scripture for a reason, all right? Uh, <clears throat> And Saul smote the Amalekites from Hevala unto thou comest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, everybody say Agag, Agag, the king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. Okay? The commandment was to kill everybody, right? Verse 8, he took who? Agag. Agag. Now turn to somebody and say, Agag must, Agag, die. Agag must die. And that's what we want to talk about tonight. We want to talk about Agag must die. Sometimes when we're studying scripture, we glamorize the word of God, and we really don't see it in its full impact. 